Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this beam using stiffness matrix method. Before analyzing, let's see the beam one time. In this beam, there are three spans span AB, span BC, and span CD. In the span AB, there is a concentrated moment 25 kN meter acting at 2 meter from the point A. In the span BC, there is a concentrated moment 20 kN meter acting in the center. Both of the moments are acting in the clockwise direction. In the span CD, there is a concentrated load 12.5 kN acting at 3 meter from the point C. In the points A, B and C, there are hinged supports. In the point D, there is a fixed support. Span AB is 5 meter long. Span BC is 4 meter long. Span CD is 5 meter long. In this beam, totally we have to find 5 moments. In the point A, there will be no moment because it is the simply supported end. In the joint B, there are 2 moments MBA and MBC. In the joint C also, there are 2 moments MCB and MCD. In the point D, we are having a fixed support. In the fixed support, there will be a moment. Here, the moment is MDC. So, totally we have to find 5 moments. Also, we have to find 4 vertical reactions RA, RB, RC and RD. Now, we are going to find the fixed end moments. First, let us take the span AB and find the fixed end moments. In the span AB, there is a clockwise concentrated moment. This moment is not acting on the center. The formulas to calculate the fixed end moments are minus MB upon L square into B minus 2A and MA upon L square into 2B minus A. Here, M is 25, A is 2, B is 3. When we apply the values inside the formulas, we are getting M of AB and M of BA. Now, let us make the fixed end moments in the span BC. In the span BC, there is a clockwise concentrated moment. This moment is acting in the center. The formula for the fixed end moments are M upon 4 and M upon 4. After applying the value of M in the formula, we are getting M of BC and M of CB. Now, let us make the fixed end moments in the span CD. In the span CD, there is a concentrated load 12.5 kN. It is not acting on the center. The formulas to calculate the fixed end moments are minus WAB square upon L square and positive WA square B upon L square. Here W is 12.5, A is 3, B is 2, L is 5. When we apply the values inside the formulas, we are getting M of CD and M of DC. In the stiffness matrix method, we have to check the number of supports in which slope can occur. Let us see the conditions. In the fixed support, there will be no slope. In the hinged support, there will be slope. And also in the roller support, there will be slope. In this beam, in the points A, B, and C, there are hinged supports. So, the number of supports where slope occurs is 3. In the point A, there is theta A. 
in the point B there is theta B and in the point C there is theta C. So in this analysis there are three unknowns. If we calculate these three unknowns we can easily find the final moments. Now let us make the fully restrained structure. In the fully restrained structure there will be no slope. We know that only in the fixed support there will be no slope. So let us remove the hinged supports from the point A, point B and point C and replace them with the fixed supports. Now in this beam there will be no slope because all of the supports are fixed that is why it is called fully restrained structure. We have made the fully restrained structure. Now let us make the coordinates diagram. In this analysis there are three coordinates. They are in the points A, B and C because in these points only we have the unknown displacement that is the slope. The coordinates should be made in the clockwise direction. You can see that all of the coordinates are in the clockwise direction. Now let's see the formula to calculate the slope values. System displacement delta matrix is equal to K matrix inverse into P matrix minus PL matrix. In this formula first let us find PL matrix. We know that PL matrix is the moments developed in the coordinates due to the given load. In this analysis there are three coordinates. In the point A, in the point B and in the point C we are having the coordinates. In the point A we have calculated a fixed end moment that is M of AB. Let us apply that. In the point B we have calculated two fixed end moments M of BA and M of BC. We have to add them. After adding we are getting 13. In the point C also we have calculated two fixed end moments M of CB and M of CD. We have to add them. After adding we are getting minus 1. Inside the PL matrix there will be three values because we are having three coordinates. The values should be in the order first from the first coordinate then from the second coordinate finally from the third coordinate. Now let us make P matrix. Inside the P matrix we will have three values because there are three coordinates. All of the values are zero because in the given beam there is no overhanging. In this formula now let us make the stiffness matrix. Inside the stiffness matrix we have to calculate the stiffness values. Let us see how to calculate the stiffness values. First we have to apply the unit displacement in every coordinate. In this analysis there are three coordinates. In the point A, in the point B and in the point C we are having the coordinates. So in these points we have to apply unit displacement. Then we have to use the formulas. If the fair end is fixed the formula is 4EI upon L. If the fair end is hinged the formula is 2EI upon L. We have to be very careful. We have to apply the unit displacement in the fully restrained structure and not in the given beam. Now let's see the size of the stiffness matrix. For three coordinates the size will be 3 by 3. For two coordinates the size will be 2 by 2. For one coordinate the size will be 1 by 1. In this analysis there are three coordinates. So the size of the matrix will be 3 by 3. Now let us make the first row in the stiffness matrix. 
For that, we have to apply unit displacement in the first coordinate. In the point A, there is a fixed support, but when we apply unit displacement, it is no longer a fixed support, it becomes a hinged support. Now, let's see how to draw this curve. We are applying unit displacement in the point A. So, from the point A, make a clockwise curve and see the direction. This curve indicates downwards. So, the slope curve comes below the span. We have to give some gap between the fixed support and the slope curve because in the fixed supports there will be no displacement. You can see that I have given some gap. That is why the slope curve ends before the point B and can't continue after the point B. Now let us calculate the stiffness values. Same like this diagram, the coordinates should be made in the clockwise direction. The stiffness values should be calculated in the order, first from the first coordinate, then from the second coordinate, finally from the third coordinate. Let us calculate K11. For that, from the point A, we have to look on both the sides. On the left side, there is nothing. On the right side, there is a fixed support. If the far end is fixed, the formula is 4EI upon L. For AB, the length is 5 meter. Let us apply that. Finally, for K11, we are getting 0.8 EI. Now, let us calculate K12. For that, from the point B, we have to look on both of the sides. On the left side, there is a hinged support. If the far end is hinged, the formula is 2EI upon L. Length of BA is 5 meter. Let us apply that. Now, let us look on the right of B. On the right of B, there is no slope curve. If there is no slope curve, there will be no stiffness value. After the calculations, we are getting K12 is equal to 0.4 EI. Now, let us calculate K13. For that, from the point C, we have to look on both of the sides. On the left side, there is no slope curve. On the right side also, there is no slope curve. So, K13 will be 0. Now, let us calculate the second row in the stiffness matrix. For that, we have to apply unit displacement in the second coordinate. In the point B, there is a fixed support. But when we apply unit displacement, it is no longer a fixed support. It becomes a hinged support. Let's see how to draw this curve. We are applying unit displacement at B. B is a joint. So, we have to make two clockwise curves, one towards the point A and one towards the point C. Then, using the direction of these arrows, we can make this curve. Now, let us calculate K21. For that, from the point A, we have to look on both of the sides. On the left side, there is nothing. On the right side, there is a hinged support. If the far end is hinged, the formula is 2EI upon L. Length of AB is 5 meter. Let us apply that. Finally, for K21, we are getting 0.4 EI. Now, let us calculate K22. For that, from the point B, we have to look on both of the sides. On the left side, there is a fixed support. If the far end is fixed, the formula is 4EI upon L. Length of BA is 5 meter. Let us apply that. Now, let us look on the right side. On the right side also, there is a fixed support. If the far end is fixed, the formula is 4EI upon L. Length of BC is 4 meter. Let us apply that. For K22, we are having two stiffness values. We have to add them. After adding, we are getting 1.8 EI. 
Now let us calculate K23. For that, from the point C, we have to look on both of the sides. On the right side, there is no slope curve. If there is no slope curve, there will be no stiffness value. On the left side, there is a hinged support. If the fair end is hinged, the formula is 2EI upon L. Length of CB is 4 meter. Let us apply that. Finally, for K23, we are getting 0.5EI. Now, let us find the third row in the stiffness matrix. For that, we have to apply unit displacement in the third coordinate. In the point C, there is a fixed support. But when we apply unit displacement, it is no longer a fixed support. It becomes a hinged support. Let us see how to draw this curve. In the point C, we are applying unit displacement. The point C is a joint. So we have to make two clockwise curves. One towards the point B and one towards the point D. Then we have to see the direction of the arrows. Using that we can make this curve. Now let's calculate K31. For that from the point A we have to look on both the sides. On the left side there is nothing. On the right side there is no slope curve. So K31 is equal to 0. Now let us calculate K32. For that, from the point B, we have to look on both of the sides. On the left side, there is no slope curve. On the right side, there is a hinged support. If the fair end is hinged, the formula is 2EI upon L. Length of BC is 4 meter. Let us apply that. So, for K32, we are getting 0.5EI. Now, let us calculate K33. For that, from the point C, we have to look on both of the sides. On the left side, there is a fixed support. If the fair end is fixed, the formula is 4EI upon L. Length of CB is 4 meter. Let us apply that. Now, let us look on the right side. On the right side also, there is a fixed support. So, we have to apply the same formula, 4EI upon L. Length of CD is 5 meter. Let us apply that. For K33, there are two stiffness values. Let us add both of them. After adding, we are getting 1.8 EI. In the stiffness matrix, we have calculated all of the three rows. Let us apply the values. EI is constant, so let us keep it outside. In this formula, we have calculated all of the values. Let us apply them. EI inverse, we will get 1 upon EI. For this matrix, we have to find the inverse. We can apply all of the values in the calculator and get the inverse. If you do not know how to calculate the inverse in the calculator, see the description below. There is a link. You can click the link and watch the video. Then we have to add these two matrices. After adding, we are getting this matrix. Then we have to multiply these two matrices. After multiplying, we are getting the final answers. The final answers will be according to the coordinates. First coordinate was in the point A. So first we will get theta A. The second coordinate was in the point B. So here we will get theta B. The final coordinate was in the point C. So here we will get theta C. In this analysis, we have calculated all of the unknowns. Now we can make slope deflection equations and find the final moments. First, let us make the slope deflection equations in the span AB. No need to make the equation for MAB because we already know it is zero. Only make the equation for MBA. In this equation, let us apply the fixed end moment, which we calculated initially. Length of AB is 5 meter. Let us apply that. After applying the values of theta A and theta B, 
we are getting MBA which is equal to 1.66 kN meter. Now let us make the slope deflection equations in the span BC. Here let us apply the fixed end moments. Length of BC is 4 meter. Let us apply that. After applying the values of theta B and theta C, we are getting MBC and MCB. Now let us make the slope deflection equations in the span CD. Let us apply the fixed end moments. Length of CD is 5 meter. Let us apply that. In the point D, there is a fixed support. In the fixed support, there will be no slope. So theta D will be 0. After applying the value of theta C, we are getting MCD and MDC. In this analysis, we have calculated all of the moments. Now we are going to calculate the vertical reactions. First, let us take the span AB and calculate the vertical reactions. In the span AB, there is only one moment, MBA, which is acting in the clockwise direction. In this span, first I am going to calculate RA. For that, I am going to take moment about B. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Clockwise will be positive and anticlockwise will be negative. RA is acting towards the point B in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is 5 meter. So 5 RA. Then there are two moments 25 and 1.66. Both of them are acting in the clockwise direction. So both of them are positive. Finally for RA we are getting 5.33. For RA we got a negative value. That means our assumption is wrong. We assumed that RA is acting upwards. But actually it is acting downwards. Now let us apply the rule summation of vertical forces is equal to 0 and calculate RB1. In this span there are two vertical forces RA and RB1. We know that RA is acting downwards so it should be negative. RB1 is acting upwards so it should be positive. Here let us apply the value of RA. In this way we can calculate RB1 which is equal to 5.33 kN. Now let us take the span BC and calculate the reactions. In the span BC there are two moments. MBC which is acting in the clockwise direction and MCB which is acting in the anticlockwise direction. In this span, first I am going to calculate RB2. For that, I am going to take moment about C. RB2 is acting towards the point C in the clockwise direction. So it will be positive and the distance is 4 meter. So for RB2, then there are 3 moments. 1.66 moment is acting in the anticlockwise direction. So it will be negative. The moments 20 and 3.76 are acting in the clockwise direction. So both of them are positive. Finally we are getting RB2 5.53 kN. For RB2 we got a negative value. That means our assumption is wrong. We assumed that RB2 is acting upwards. But actually it is acting downwards. Now using the rule summation of vertical forces is equal to 0, we can calculate RC1. After applying the rule, we are getting RC1 which is equal to 5.53 kN. Now let us take the span CD and calculate the vertical reactions. In the span CD, there are two moments. MCD which is acting in the anticlockwise direction and MDC which is acting in the clockwise direction. By taking moment about D, we can calculate RC2 
which is equal to 3.73 kN by applying this rule we can calculate rd which is equal to 8.77 kN in the point b we have calculated the reaction two times let us add both of them after adding we are getting 0.2 kN for rb we got a negative value that means it is acting downwards for rc also we have calculated the reaction two times let us add the values after adding for rc we are getting 9.26 kN now we are going to draw the shear force diagram before drawing the diagram let us calculate the shear force values I am going to calculate the shear force values from the point A and towards the point D. In this case, I am moving towards right hand side. Upwards will be positive and downwards will be negative. You can see the shear force calculations using the values we can make the shear force diagram. Now we are going to draw the free moment diagram. For drawing the free moment diagram, we have to consider every span as a separate simply supported beam and calculate the moments. If in the simply supported beam, concentrated moment is acting in the clockwise direction and it is not acting on the center, the formula to calculate the ordinates are MB upon L and MA upon L. Here M is 25, A is 2, B is 3. After applying the values inside the formulas, we are getting 15 and 10. On the left side of the moment, it will be negative and on the right side, it will be positive. If in the simply supported beam, concentrated moment is acting in the clockwise direction and it is acting on the center, the formula to calculate the ordinates are m upon 2 and m upon 2. Both of the formulas are same. Here m is 20. After applying the values inside the formulas, we are getting the ordinates 10 and 10. On the left side of the moment, it will be negative and on the right side, it will be positive. Then let us take the span CD. Here there is a point load 12.5 kN. It is not acting on the center. The formula to calculate the ordinate is WAB upon L. Using the formula we are getting the ordinate 15. Now using the end moments we can make the end moment diagram. Then we have to combine the free moment diagram and the end moment diagram. So we will get the bending moment diagram. Now we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.